hi everyone my name is Bimsoya and welcome to my youtube channel in today's video i'm going to be talking about 10 tips to kickstart your it career in canada okay so i'm going to go straight to the video but before i continue i would like to give a brief background of my career in my it career in canada okay so when i came into canada i had um a combined three plus years experience in it and that spanned through telecoms um it audits it risk and cyber security okay so um, upon getting into canada i knew that i wanted to focus on cyber security and so i started taking steps um doing my research as to how i can land a role in cyber security in canada okay so um that's just briefly about me um so i'm going to go ahead and drop the 10 tips okay so the first tip for me would be um you need to have an area of interest um or depending on what your situation is you already have an area of interest so what i mean by that is um remember when i was giving my um background i said um had done a couple of things in certain areas so i had done it audit i done it risk i done cyber security and i done some telecoms but i wanted to focus on cyber security so in that light you need to have a focus area um especially if you're new to it or um even if you're transitioning and like you might you might just want something different different from the field you have been like over the past two years over the past three years you might just want um to diversify just a little bit okay um and i say this because like we know it field is broad um and you necessarily you don't necessarily have to have studied something in school to work there you might just have to take some certifications or some courses or even do a postgraduate course or a master's degree in a certain field of it and then it will qualify you to it will qualify you to be able to work in that area of it so yeah that's my first tip you need to have an area of interest and you need to have a focus my second tip would be get qualified in that area of interest okay so when i say get qualified in that area of interest what i mean is if you do not already have the qualifications to enable you the qualifications and all the skills to enable you um land a job in that area of interest you would definitely need to upskill you will need to maybe do some courses um you will need to go back to school for a postgraduate degree and even if you're a new student you need to maybe just do some research on what are the what are the certifications that you would need in order for you to um land a job in that area of interest um, basically to do this properly you just need to do your research um you need to find out what are these courses what are the um certifications that are trending in this area um researching you could just go to like maybe a job a job site a job website and just just check out the type of jobs that you're looking for something similar to what you're looking for and then look at the qualifications that are required for that type of job and then just compare with what you currently have is it sufficient enough for you to be able to land that job if you were to apply so yeah that's my second tip my third tip would be to upgrade your cv appropriately so yeah um at this stage you have um you already have a full course and you've already checked the courses um you already have all the required qualifications for this job so now you need to let the you need to put yourself out there and you can only do this by putting it out through your cv that's that's the only way someone would get to know about you if you're trying to apply for a job really except if you have someone from inside of course so here um you need to upgrade your cv um you need to in your cv you need to show your experience you need to show your skills you need to let the recruiter know that this is your area of interest and that you're capable of delivering 
um, what they require. Yeah, so a little bit more about your CV. Um, your CV, of course, as we know, should already contain your previous roles, your past roles. Um, another good thing that I see that um, recruiters like is that um, they always like it when you highlight um, your achievements in your roles. So what I mean by that is, say you worked in a certain company as an IT analyst um, during from 2020, from 2018 to 2021. Um, so you list your, you say the name of the company and the duration while you worked there, your your role, like things you did while you worked there in that role. Um, an interesting thing is also to add your achievements. So while in that role, for instance, you could say maybe an achievement section, one or two achievements to define, say something like I deployed um, service now for my company during my duration, um, something like that. Just state your achievements. And um, um, I, I find that recruiters actually find that section interesting and that usually kind of sparks conversation maybe when you're in when you're in an interview when you're in an interview or yeah you, you never can tell really so yeah that's that's i'm just going to put a pause on that for cv right now and go on to my next tip um my next tip would be um make use of relevance websites i'm sure you already know this but of course if you're looking for a job you need to be checking um job sites and checking job sites and even you can take it a notch further by signing up for notifications for the kind of um, job roles that you're looking for this way it makes it easier for you to know when a new role is in the market um you also be among the first set of people to apply to that role if you got a notification earlier um talking from experience i know that i find that it's I, I have a better chance of being called for an interview if I apply for the role within the first few days um, of um, the role getting into the market. I find that when I apply for uh, a job that has been in the market for a week or two weeks, there is high possibility that the role has already been filled. So really, um, it's safer. I, I, I believe it's safer and more... It's, it gives me better it gives me a better chance if i apply for the role when when it's just a few days in the market okay that's that um about using relevant websites so i'm just going to give a few um i know that the most popular one for me would be indeed.ca there are a couple of a couple of other ones there's um um it jobs um dot ca i think that's what it is i'm just going to put a couple of um examples in the description box just in case you're looking for job websites that you can check for roles and you can sign up for okay and um moving, moving on to the next tip is build and improve your professional network in canada um yeah i know that um a lot of us have uh and then when i say professional websites i mean um linkedin there are all a couple of other like social media but linkedin is like the most popular professional one so you need to build your professional network not just using linkedin um if you're able to maybe contact people as well that would be nice but i'll focus on linkedin in this conversation so here you need to maybe just search on linkedin like people that are doing something similar to what you want to do people in the field um yeah just add people up add people up as much as possible they would now eventually form your professional network and then i know that it's, it's one thing for you to want to add someone up and then it's another thing for you to be shy um thinking that maybe the person wouldn't respond to you or the person doesn't know you well that doesn't matter because like i've added a lot of people up and i barely know them and some of them would respond and accept some wouldn't so and that's fine um, if you add someone up and they do not respond to you, that's okay as well. It doesn't, it doesn't add or subtract anything from you. At least you tried, right? So yeah, you need to build your professional network and you need to, if you already started, you need to still improve your professional network. Um, that would like, and then 
after building your professional network then you need to leverage the network of course um let people know let people know like on your linkedin profile you can let them know that you can um update your linkedin profile that you're actually searching for a job um even via linkedin you can see or find jobs like recruiters also post job opportunities on linkedin so yeah that's those are some of the ways you can improve or build your professional network in canada the sixth tip here is get referrals like do not underestimate the power of referrals um this tip kind of ties to the previous one i spoke about building your network so if you have built your network and um for instance you now see a role um in a certain company where one of your uh one of your linkedin connects is a staff or in that team or something like interesting thing about linkedin is that linkedin would let you know um who works where so linkedin will give you a notification a notification like oh there is a, an it analyst role in bank abc um john snow works here as a manager or a senior manager and for interest in, interestingly john snow is already your linkedin connect and um, you never can tell john snow might even be the hiring manager for that role so what i mean by getting referrals is you could just reach out to john snow via linkedin um just type a simple message of course you need to be cautious and you just say something around hi john snow um i see this role blah 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 in your organization i know i'm qualified i think i'm qualified for this role and um, i'd like to apply do you mind giving me a referral something as simple as that really and basically if john snow sees that john snow might just feel like oh why not help this guy why not help this contact and you might just maybe send you an email get a response through linkedin or something or even ask you for your cv and forward it to the recruiter um i'm actually talking from experience i actually got a role i got a role through something like this and it, it actually works trust me so yeah that's one that's one way you can use referrals the second way you can use referrals is getting referrals from your colleagues or your past colleagues or even friends and family members so there's really nothing to be shy about when you're looking for a job or when you're job hunting or something like if you find a role randomly maybe on one of the job sites or job boards and you know someone that works in that organization it's really not a big deal you just need to send an email or call or chat up the person depending on your closeness or your relationship with the person and ask if they are, if they can give you a referral um it's only ask you wouldn't know if you don't ask so if the person gives you a referral perfect if they don't then you move on and just apply okay so yeah i'm just going to stop there concerning referrals the next point is research recruitment process yeah i know that sounds very cliche like you would think um everybody would should know this everybody should do this but yeah research recruitment process um so now you have come this far you've done all the other six tips like you you already have your cv done you already got the referral maybe you even got a referral um maybe you the recruiter already called you and they had like sent you the first email to say oh we are moving on with you are you available for an interview or are you available for a test blah 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 the point still is you need to kind of have an idea of what you're getting yourself into I, i'm going to state it that way because um that's what researching recruitment process to me is so you want to be aware of how many stages are this um would this process be is there an aptitude test is there going to be an hr interview um is there going to be uh technical interviews how many technical interviews will i be um doing in this recruitment process these are like vital information that would be helpful it helps you to kind of get your mind in like put your mind in the right um thinking frame and um 
it also helps you so you so you don't you don't get a shocker when it gets when you get to an interview for instance um you during the process of researching you might even come across some questions that they might ask you during the interview so i'll give an example um of a website where you can do such research um i know that i have i have actually found interesting interview questions using glassdoor glassdoor.ca um, if you search the company name or even the role you'll see that some people might have reviewed it some people might have um, done maybe posts on similar roles including their interview questions um, it would also researching the process sometimes will even help enable you to know um, the reviews about the company the reviews about the role sometimes the reviews about the team so yeah um it's actually a viable step and i don't think anybody should skip this step okay yeah so that's that about researching the process the eighth tip is you need to prepare for each step for, for every step in that process so now you already know the steps you know the um, recruitment process so for instance if you found out that you have an aptitude test you have an hr interview and then you have two technical interviews you would need to prepare for each of those stages just so that you don't go there to an interview and be shocked really so yeah that's basically it's prepare 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 like there is no such thing as too much preparation right um yeah so that's that about preparation and my ninth tip would be do not go silent do not go silent um, after every stage or um, depending on how many stages you do ensure that you follow up with your contact person in that organization um, this just enables the recruiter or whoever it is that's your contact person to know that you're really interested in this role and that um, you you're looking forward to hearing back from them um, there are a couple of ways you can do this. Um, it depends, but the most the most um, common one is just sending an email um, in response to maybe the interview email. So the email is just going to be something like thanking them for their time for the interview or, uh, yeah, most likely for the interview. And then asking, t letting them know that you look forward to hearing back from them. Really, it's, it's as simple as that. My last and final tip is tip number 10 do not give up until you get what you want yeah i know that job hunting is very tiring especially if you keep if you keep like applying doing interviews and not get anything but then trust me if you give up you wouldn't get anything either way so that's why you do not have to you just need to keep trying you need to keep pushing forward keep applying for those jobs keep improving yourself if you have to continue networking and continue researching and i'm certain that you will definitely get what you want in no time okay so that's that about this video thank you so much for watching to this point um i hope this really helps you um and if you know anybody that would benefit from this video i'd like you to please share with them um because yeah job hunting is the ghetto for some people honestly it, but it's doable um if you put in the work okay so thank you very much for watching and um if you like this video please give it a thumbs up um subscribe to my channel uh, because we're going to have more helpful tips more helpful videos coming your way pretty soon thank you so much for watching and Bye.